Hey, welcome, or welcome back to Four of Beauty. When will I be YouTube famous? I don't know, probably never. However, if you're wondering what on earth I've done today, a friend of mine has got a 60s party to go to and the theme is flower power. And she asked me to do a tutorial for her that she could follow to use for her party. So the Revolution Pride palette arrived and um, it just seemed an opportune moment to crack out some face paint. So if you want to see how to achieve this look I also show you how to do just the eye look so if you're going to a party that is 60s themed but it isn't flower power you just want to look like a, you know 60s I show you that part of the tutorial including how to do the face and everything um, and then I, I go on to do the flower power so grab a drink grab a snack put your favourite 60s compilation on quietly in the background and uh, enjoy hey welcome back from the intro right I don't know if I've explained this in the intro so I'm going to do it now in case I forget this is going to be like a two part film because a friend of mine Sam has got a party to go to and it's 60s flower power so she said could I do a tutorial that she can follow and I'm like yeah of course I can no problem and then I thought I could kind of do a generic 60s look and show you how to achieve that and then I could go back in using these pride face paints from Revolution instead of using all my expensive Jeffrey lipsticks because we're going to see whether I actually react to this face paint like I do all the others um, and flower power it up so that's the plan so I'm initially going to go through and show you what I'm doing with my eyes I'll then put my foundation on I'll come back in and explain what I'm doing base wise because they didn't really use contour, but they did use a bit of blush, but everything was very, very, everything was very matte and not shiny. So I'm going to have to resist using highlight, which <sighs> those of you who know me know how much I love to glue bright enough to dazzle the gods so they can't see what I'm up to. However, um, this is um, what I consider a teaching channel. Let me zoom you in while I'm talking. Um, so I do go slowly enough for complete beginners to catch up with me and also because of my chronic pain I very often have to stop and uh, give myself a minute because I'm in too much pain to continue filming so if you are an expert then by all means speed me up um, and go a bit faster but uh, this is a teaching channel and I want people to be able to follow it step by step by step as if I was sitting opposite them teaching them how to do it okay face is washed, moisturised, SPF'd and primed um, and instead of my MAC paint pot because soft ochre is quite yellow based I've actually put some Tarte Shape Tape on which I've not set as you can see it's already starting to crease through there lovely Um, because I want, I'm going to go quite stark on the eyes. I'm going to do a very, very traditional 60s look. Now, I've got deep set eyes, so I have this similar problem that people with hooded lids have, where I get transfer of colour onto my upper lid. If I'm cutting my crease, I have to come up onto my upper lid rather than just doing my socket. And even when I wear glitter glue, glitter always flakes off. Okay. Now, a lot of people think they've got hooded lids when they've actually got deep set eyes or double lidded eyes as they're sometimes called the way to tell the difference with your eyes open and your brows relaxed you can see all of my mobile lid from inner corner to outer corner admittedly you can't see much of it but you can see it 
so I've not got hooded lids because you can see my mobile lid. If your upper lid, your static lid, completely covers right down to the lash line any part of your lower lid, then you have either a full or a half hooded lid or what's known as a mono or an Asian eye. Now, if I show you what I mean about deep set eyes, if I cover up, because this is the eye I'm blinding so I can still see what I'm doing when I demonstrate, if I cover up my mobile lid and close my eye, can you see I've got as much lid space again that tucks back in? And then if I cover my static lid and close my eye, I've got about half that again on the upper lid. So that's why I get the issue of colours transferring up. Okay. Um, you can still follow my tutorial, you can still follow anybody's tutorial with hooded lids. Get yourself a flat top brush, something like this, and just sketch out on your static lid where you need your crease to fall. So you're basically creating the effect of having a mobile lid on your static lid. Obviously that's going to reduce the space between your crease and your brow, so just use slightly smaller brushes than I do or whoever's tutorial or following is. Once you've done this a few times, you won't need to sketch your line out, you'll know exactly where it falls. Now, the look I'm going to do today is very Twiggy-esque or Jean Shrimpton. So I'm going to do very, very stark white on the eyes, which I'm going to attempt to line with black liner, but I have got very runny eyes at the moment with a combination of my fibro and my hay fever, so I could end up looking like Alice Cooper, but he was around in the 60s too, so there we go. Um, and then the face is going to be very, very matte, pretty much all the colour taken out apart from just a bit on my cheeks and um, very, very pale lips. Now, I am not plucking my eyebrows down to be as small as 60s eyebrows, so you're going to have to make do with my 2000 eyebrows, I'm afraid. Now, the best white that I've got is in the Anastasia or Anastasia Riviera palette. I'm going to start off with my little flat top brush. I'm just going to dip it in to sails. And because I want to be able to see it, I'm just going to, as I said to you, just going to sketch the area that I want to fill in. Just to give me an upper kind of limit, I'm just going to curl the end up because that then it gives the impression of elongating the eye up and gives you that more um, sort of lifted look to your eye. So it, it does help you look a little bit younger as well. I'm just going to. So basically, that's the shape that I'm going to be filling in. And then I'm going to do exactly the same thing on this eye. You can see what I mean about how good this white is. I mean, it's just it's fantastic. It really is. Uh, it's by far the most pigmented white that I've used. Uh, that being said, though, I haven't tried the sugar pill white, which I understand is also very good. Um, if you've not got uh, the Riviera palette, just use the the starkest white that you have. It doesn't really matter that that's sort of like smudged there because I'm going to be tidying it up later anyway. Right. And now going in with a flat topped brush. This is one of the brushes from the AliExpress set that I recommend in my film down there. Um, this is number two. So I'm just going to pack the white on. And then just pack the white on, basically. How's your day been? Has it been a good one? Or are you at the start of your day? Do you watch me over your cornflakes in the morning? Or are you having pancakes, maybe, with syrup? What did you have for breakfast today? Let me know in the description. 
not the description, the comments, I like the description. Honestly, can you tell I'm having a bad day, fibro wise? But can you also see what I mean about how beautiful this white is? Um, if you are one of my more melanin enriched babies, um, if the white is too stark on you, um, use a cream or maybe a buttermilk lemon. But you want to get it as as light as you can, really, because they did love their very very pale eye looks. Um, so if you've if you've got a sixties do to go to, that isn't flower power, this look the first half of this film will show you the sort of look you can do. So I'm literally just using this packing brush and just, you know, just, just packing the white into the area that I defined earlier. This is actually one of the easiest decades to do when it comes to makeup because they didn't really do a great deal. They didn't really contour or bronze. Um, they didn't really highlight. Oh, great, this eye started to weep right on this corner, can you see? That's going to be helpful when I go back in it right at the end with the blue liner, isn't it? Deep joy. And just sit back and check that they both look about the same. Because obviously your eyes are not symmetrical. But you just want to make sure they, they give the same kind of effect both sides. I think I've gone a bit too high with that arch, so I'm going to have to do the same on this one now. Sorry if the lighting, the uh, you know the brightness keeps changing, but the sun's coming in and out out there behind that cloud like nobody's business today. Right, so I clean that brush off. Yes, I've got hella fallout because I didn't tap off. I literally just wanted to pack that on. But, as you can see, it dusts away quite easily. Right, I'm going to pause you and I'm going to chuck some foundation on. And I'll be back to show you what I do in terms of um, face makeup. Okay? See you right now. Bye! Right, so I've put... Um, a matte foundation on, uh, quite a bright concealer, I use my shape tape under here which normally I mix with my peach colour corrector because it's so so bright white but I wanted to keep the brightness so I didn't use my peach colour corrector because actually my full coverage foundation covered my dark circles. Anyway, um, I just wanted that for brightness. I've done very very simple brows, just brow pencil and this lippy is Jeffrey's Can't Relate. So very, very pale. Go for as pale a nude as you can wear for your skin tone. Because obviously, if you're one of my melanin enriched babies, this is going to look ridiculous on you. So whatever your um, lightest nude you can possibly get away with is, use that and go for either a matte or a satin because uh, glosses tended to be worn more by teenagers than grown women okay now as you can see i've got no bronzer no contour on yes that really is my cheekbone ah oh, losing weight's marvelous and then I'm going to use, uh, I've got a very, very pale pink blush back here. This is a Revolution Bang Bang You're Dead from their uh, Vivid Bla Baked Blushes. Blaked Blushes. As you can see, super, super pale. So again, use the palest blush you can get away with. And normally I start at the back and work forward but this time I'm going right onto the apple of my cheek 
and then gently going back but I'm normally you know I'll take it up my temple but we're not doing that we're just going to do the apple and go back towards the top of our ear and it gives a very flushed sort of you just pinched your cheeks or come in from the cold look really really concentrate most of it right up on the front here on your apples of your cheeks which as you know I normally say don't do but it's the 70s no it's the 60s sorry that's perhaps a little bit too much um, I'm gonna go in I finally got hourglass ambient lighting in dim light to try um, so I'm just gonna run that over the top just to sort of blend it back in with the base because they did tend to use cream blushes they, they, they tended to use whatever their lipstick was on their cheeks um, I just I hate cream blushes so I don't have any and this lipstick is uh, a liquid lipstick so it wouldn't really work on cheeks so a, a cream lipstick does tend to look more natural, more blended in like, like this one does, okay? Now, I'm going to use my little mir mini mirror so I can see what I'm doing. And I'm going to grab one of my eyeliners. Now, which one shall I grab? No, that one just, that's a bitch to get back off again. Uh, I suppose really I should have chosen this before I, uh, before I sat down. Okay, I'm going to use, this is a QIC um, eyeliner that I got from, I think AliExpress to be honest. Right, let's get you zoomed in. Okay, and then what we're going to do with black liner very carefully outline the white that we put on I'm probably not going to talk much during this because I need to concentrate I might put some music on for you This eye's uh, a lot more um, flexible and mobile than my other eyelid. I'm only not going a little bit thick there. Try and keep the line as thin as you can, really. If you do little strokes rather than one big long stroke, it's much easier to control it.
Okay. So that would be your generic 60s look. Obviously you'd do something with your hair, but I need to do some more stuff to my face first. But this would be your very generic 1960s. So very, very plain, very, very sort of matte. Bright white, which you outline. Quite strong brows, but usually they were quite thin. But just, just make sure your brows can be seen. Um, as pale a nude lipstick as you can get away with. Usually more on the pink side than peach or neutral. So the lightest pink nude you've got that you can get away with, use that for your lips. Okay. And obviously your best bet in terms of hairstyle would be to grab a wig with a full fringe that's either a bob or very very long. Think share. Um, think twiggy for the shorter hair or like Lulu um, with the, the curled under or the flicked out bob. Okay. Now this obviously is not flower power but this would be a good basic start. This is where you'd need to start. Now now comes the fun bit and she says that <sighs> carefully because I'm not actually quite sure how well this is going to work out because because of uh, pain etc I've not actually had time to practice this look so yeah this 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 um, this could be interesting let's get you zoomed in Now, the brush I'm going to use is one of these, um, if ever you've seen me cut my crease, you'll have seen that I use um, brushes that are meant for nail acrylic. I got a set of them from eBay for about, I think, five quid. But you can see they come down super, super thin, and that's really what you want when you're going to be drawing. I mean, really, I'm, I'm trying to find one of my... Ah, oh, there we go. This is one of my super, super thin liners. So I'm going to start off going into the yellow. Oh dear, wish me luck guys, because I genuinely have no idea how this is going to turn out. I'm going to start off with a yellow circle. Right there. Maybe I need to zoom you out just a fraction. I'm gonna I'm just using a plain white cloth fibrous cloth so you might see some uh, fuzzies <laughs> just cleaning the yellow off of this or the majority of the yellow off of this anyway and then I'm gonna go into the blue Start to draw some petals. I 
and then just fill it in with a larger brush. You can use the this one if you want, but it will take you a lot longer. Now, obviously, this is going to take me quite a while. And although I don't normally do this on my tutorials, I might speed this bit up. Just so that you're not sitting here for like, hours. Because when it comes down to, to drawing the flowers, it's very much on you how you want them to look. Um, you can do the flower all the same colour. I'm actually going to do different colours on this flower. Um, but it really is your imagination, just as bright as you can get it, really, because it, you know, the 60s was very, very bright. So, I'm going to go into the red. Like I said, I might speed this up. I might leave it the same speed, but put music over it. Depends how long the finished film is. Okay. As I said, not the best flower in the world, but it's a flower. Uh, I think what I'm going to do now is I'm probably going to pause you while I paint some more of these on my face. And uh, I'll come back at the end and um, finish it off, really. Okay. Uh, see you with me looking far more colourful than this in a couple of minutes. I ended up going over... Um, the other colours with the blue because I, I, it wasn't looking it didn't look how I wanted it to so I went over them with the blue so they're still all different colours but they're more toned in so as you can see I did quite a few on my cheek then I've run it up and round and onto my forehead if you're going to do this you really only want to do one side of your face 
Um, if you wanted to do something this side, you could maybe do a big flower that comes completely over this eye. But I actually much prefer this. And um, this liner that I've got on the other end actually has a stamp for little flowers. So what you can do, if you've got one of these, is just kind of randomly dot them on to continue the whole look. Right. Uh, having done that, I am now going to pause you while I put mascara on. It's the only thing I didn't do for the 60s look, the mascara, because I didn't want to risk getting anything mixed in with this. Um, or I didn't know if I'd end up getting paint on my lashes because I'm a bit of a klutz. So I'm going to put some mascara on. I'm going to take my hair down and I'll be back. There we go. There is your 60s flower power fun look. Now with the lower lashes, what they oh, let me zoom you in instead of leaning in. What they tended to do was oh, I kind of smudged that one a bit. Ignore that eye. Is they used to draw little lines on with their eyeliner. I don't know why they used to do that, but literally just. Draw little lines in with your eyeliner. But there you go. Flower power. What do we think? Hmm? Do you think you could try this? If you do, I would really, really love to see the results please please tag me them on insta or um, send me a direct message on twitter if you don't want to put it up on online anywhere um, because actually that's that's quite fun there you go sam hope that was helpful um let me know how yours turned out right as ever, please do keep an eye on your subscriptions, make sure you are still subscribed and if you had the bell rung, make sure it still says all notifications because people are still getting unsubscribed. Now, I do have lots of other films on my channel which are far more appropriate for uh, actually leaving the house in when you're not going to a party. Um, <laughs> I really hope you enjoyed this. Uh, so. All that remains for me to say, as ever, is your stay fabulous, and I'll see you next time. Bye for now.